Here, welcome to an interview here on Drive 105 and association with DerryCityChat.com and we've got Kevin Derry in the hot seat tonight. Kevin, you're very welcome. Thank you, Gringo. Uh, we have a few questions that came off the members of DerryCityChat.com and Tenacious D, he throws on his first question, he says, with your sausage roll bap, do you have red sauce or brown sauce? Definitely red sauce. Yeah, red sauce, man. Okay. Oh, aye. The boys won't be too happy, you know, because they're all very, very much prone towards uh, sort of brown sauce. A brown sauce. sauce. Uh, I'm a red sauce man. Uh. Is that the Man United on you? That's probably about a Man United on me, alright then. <laughs> Forza asks, Kevin, clearly last year was a tough time for everyone at the club. At one stage, it seemed as if your proposed move to Hamilton was blocked and you were rightly annoyed. Within a few months, however, you decided not to leave the club for Shamrock Rovers, instead sticking with Derry. What prompted the apparent and appreciated change in heart? Just come back to two seasons ago, sorry, for the question. I think it was a proposed proposed move to Hamilton was the reason being that we weren't paid our wages and obviously it was a breach of contract and I had contact from Hamilton but it never happened for whatever reasons and listen, that's in the past now so I'm not entirely worried. I'm just happy that Derry managed to come up last year and the reason I turned down the chance to play for Shamrock Rovers is because I thoroughly believed that Derry could come back to Premier and it, it, it was a great decision to end up personally and um, just a wee bit unfortunate on a personal level I couldn't play more games and be involved a wee bit more but in, in the end of that, I actually I played 15 games and I feel as if I had some sort of input on it and I'm just hoping that we can kick on now again and really get this club back to where it belongs. D75 asks, do you watch the Derry City under 21 teams and if so, who do you think will make it to the first team in the coming seasons? No, to be honest, they play on a Saturday and we us being either away on Friday night and getting back lit. It's, if they were at home, they'd be fair. I've went and watched a few games. I've played quite a few under-21 games coming back from injury. So I've seen a few players and obviously the likes of Patrick and that, maybe they weren't on it for so long. But most of the young players are involved with now. So coming out of that, I think the boys that come on training with, they're all good players, but... They, they point out one bit a wee bit selfish and myself like but I think the young players coming in and train with us on a Wednesday usually we come in and do 11 v 11 they all apply themselves very good and I think I think the future is bright looking for Derry City. Yeah. Eugenio who is one of the elder members of DerryCityChat.com asked the question what was it like in the first division was it hard to get motivated in front of small crowds and often poor pitches? No, to be honest, Eugenio, I don't think it was because I think our goal was to really, really push together and get out of that first division. I think it would have been so unjustified going back and us never coming out of it because I think to, by a clear mile, I think that Derry were, were the best team and fair play to Monaghan. They made a great push, but I think justice was probably deservedly done and it wasn't it wasn't hard getting motivated because the simple fact is that I think if you ask any footballer they just want to play football it's uh, even if I wasn't playing for Derry City or I never made it I'd probably be playing I'd be playing the D&D &D or I'd be playing the Saturday or Sunday morning league so it was never it was never in terms of motivation but I know what he's asking in terms of playing in front of big crowds at the Randwell no but I really enjoyed my football last year and when I did play it was wasn't in terms of getting motivated it wasn't hard at all no Barry O asks a question. Once again, after his first Gretna goal, did you think, I must do the lotto tonight? And again, after your second goal, do you think, I'm definitely doing the lotto tonight? Jeepers. I wish I had it done the lotto because I'd probably love them Barbados or something. Right? No, it's just one of them nights, to be honest. I know, I know it's always going to be highlighted as part of, part of what, I, what happened that night and I scored two great goals. But I've always said it to everyone I've spoke to. Listen, I, no, I won't get caught up in it and I don't like to obviously talk about it a lot but it was a great night for Derry City first and foremost and fortunately for myself I scored two good goals but I think in terms of the game I've probably played better games do you know what I mean and I've always said it to everyone and ev obviously goals goals get you remembered like and hopefully hopefully there's more big nights that's what I would say I don't want to dwell on the past it was a great night against Gretna but I would like to see more of the same and Derry kick on again and get into Europe. That just leads me on to the next question from Nathan Sweeney he says, what were you thinking? What were you thinking about the moment before you stepped up to take that free kick? What was going through your mind before you took a free kick? Did you think, I'm going to shoot here? Or? No, what I, what I always do remember, to be fair, Gringo, is the balls we were training with. Because when, when we were doing a bit of shooting and that the day before the games, we were using the balls. And they did, they moved really well and they flew. And I think the boys were saying, no, if you hit this ball right, no, no keeper saving it. So there was talk about the balls. And for whatever reason, the ball, we got a free kick. And... 
I just had it in my mind, listen, I'm, I'm hitting this because I was, I was hitting them well the day before in training and all, so I think on the day it was just, I played in my head that the balls are really good and if you catch them right, that no keeper saving them and unfortunately for myself, no, they were two good goals because I think the balls were actually different from the ones we were using and it, and it, it made the ball move a lot and it was, it was a good night there, I so. I don't know if you remember, it's a wee personal question, that's not on this this season, maybe I shouldn't throw it on the front of you, but when you celebrated, you turned away from the day. <laughs> I probably, didn't oh, go, this is good. your question, I probably forgot how to celebrate, to be honest. It was just a wee bit, wee bit, it probably did take me by surprise, to be honest, because it was such a good goal, to be fair, and um, I turned away, and then when I scored a second, I said, right, I can't forget, there's about three and a half thousand fans up in that stand, I need to, I need to <laughs> celebrate with Evans this time, so it took me an error the first time, and probably surprised myself, but after the second time, man, I knew I knew I was going over and get involved in the crowd, and it was a bit silly, I think at the end, you can sometimes you still see the photo, the, I end up remembering, geez, I'm the wrong way, and then I try and give it another signal to the crowd, so it was a wee bit of an error from myself. <laughs> Comedic sort of celebration at the end as well. We you Steve, what was that about? I was sure you know what Steve no like. We always talk about him. He's a pure loves a banter and loves a crack. I think I think we all look like a a bit stupid after the game when we were dancing around my hats and skirts on. <laughs> like probably thought we won the World Cup, but sure. It was all it was all part of the night, and I think the occasion was excellent because of the support. I think it's easy said, like, but it's an old cliche. But without the support, you know, we would have been half a night. And the way that their fans travelled over there, they credit themselves, hey, and that's what added to the, the night. Like. Barry Davey asked the question, are you a custard cream or bourbon cream man? Custard cream. We Pat Fennel was a bourbon cream man, I think it was. No, it wouldn't be like him. <laughs> As you know, Kim and I run that forum, but I don't know everybody by name, and they've all got their own wee sort of usernames, and there's a guy called Wee Nick, and he asked the question, have you ever been injury-free coming on the pre-season? Oh, I've been injury free coming on the pre season, but I've, I've, I've obviously sat down with Colm and thought about it. And in terms of getting through the whole of pre season without being injured, um, I don't think it's I don't think I've played the first game of the season, maybe four or five seasons. So I've been I've been injury free coming on the pre season. That's not the issue. It's um, it's getting through pre season without picking up an injury. Which I think if you ask any footballer, Gringo, it's it's hard to do because it's very intense training. And just unfortunate for myself that. I got all the hard work done and I pick up an injury with about three weeks day pre season or and day pre season so it's just been unfortunate but as I said I didn't miss I missed three or four games at the start of last season. I think I've missed two this year so it's just unfortunate and it's timing but I would love to, I would love to have the ground running. I've i I've always said it and I, and I'm sick of saying it to be honest, but there's some day I will I'll hit the ground running and we'll we'll get there. But I'm just glad to be back and playing with the boys now. Anyway. Four games on, and you played your second match. You've two games under your belt. Now, would you say that you're 100 percent fit, or are we well, still able to no. Well, in terms of sharpness and match fitness, I think I think most players will tell you that they probably need to play. Not this is not a way out or anything. I think you need to be playing four or five games to get near where you should be. Because to be fair, I don't miss a lot of pre-season, and and it's obviously catching up. And but in terms of the two games are going to help me a lot, and I'm hoping to get on the brain now, and I'm I'm hoping that we can get a get a big massive performance and I think I highlighted it last year that when we were bitting the Brandywell or I'm not saying it was a great result against Rovers but we were bitting the Brandywell last year and we had the character to go away to Limerick again and bounce back so what I would say about this young side is they've plenty of character and we would be great for us to go down to Bray and get a, get a big one on Friday night. Paul Alonso asked the question who would you like to see lose badly in a fight between Stuart Byrne and Jason McGuinness? Probably Stuart Byrne just just the fact that they popped us the league in that and I don't think Jason McGuinness was involved in the Shelburne team a few years ago when whenever Stuart had that outburst at Stephen and that and I think it was it was pretty personal because I feel that uh, no one ever talks about it we're probably goal difference away from winning the treble so that's probably another reason why, why I would like to see him getting beat up with Jason McGuinness <laughs> Big J asks, do you feel handsome enough to wear Kieran Martin's number 8 shirt as well as he does? Well, uh, no doubt in Kieran. Kieran was an excellent player for Derry and I've always said, no, Kieran, Kieran had a great attribute of scoring goals and he gets a lot of goals and I'm a totally different player from Kieran. No, I'm not, I'm not wearing his jersey trying to highlight that I want to be like Kieran Martin or I want to be as good looking as him. Or, <laughs> but I, what I would say is I've, I'm wearing number 8 just because that's my number now and 
listen, there's some great past memories of wearing an R squad number, but Kieran's been, an, I always say it, he's an excellent player for Derry, and unfo- or not unfortunately, he's moved on, do you know what I mean? It's it happens in football, it could happen to anyone, and I, I, I just wear number eight because that's what number I was given. I, Ah, uh, uh, I don't even. I don't want to get involved. <laughs> bring up no, no. Uh, D. Kern asked the question: Do you think that Shane McElhenney looks like a reject from the band Alphabet with that stupid haircut? Mm, he probably does a wee bit, all right. Uh, you have a fair point. No, we Shane, uh, we Shane. It's um, he's a great big fella, and um, he's Barnet as a wee bit shocking. To be fair, I. Could be worse. He could have shaved off. Oh, he could be lost in it. Eh? There's a few boys losing it, like, but first and the first Shane has plenty of air. Do you know any names about the boys that are losing it? Oh, yeah, they're starting to go thin at the top. Eh? Jared eh? Doherty. Jared's a fair day grow, has like, because he knows it wouldn't grow too well, so that's <laughs> <laughs> enough name said. Paddy the Harp Shader asks Blue and white away top, yellow away top, or black away top, what's your favourite? And plus, who really forgot the home kit for the Dublin photo shoot? You or the club? Well, we'll go on. The, the probably my favourite jersey is probably black. To be honest, I um, just think it looks really well. The whole black kit. But saying that, the yellow jersey the other night was nice, and the, everyone thinks the blue and white Argentina rig was very nice. But they were all nice jerseys. Do you know what I mean? So my personal favourite would be black. In terms of the other thing about the FAA going down to the Lancer League, nothing to do with me. Not my fault. Sean Barrett, mis- miscommunication, him and Stephen, whatever they've done, they've, they've hung me out to dry and I was down my dairy tracks. It. If I hadn't have brought no gear, I would have been I would have been left just in a normal tracks or a pair of jeans and a jumper. So I I, have, I actually compromised and brought a, a tracks it, so I think I should be praising that. Good stuff. A final question, Kevin. John McBride asks, which two players, one from the past and one from the present, would you least like to have to sit beside on a coach to Cork, and for what reason? Now, he has a second part of the question, but right. I'd like the answer first. Right. The past, I'd probably say, I'll go Dave Rogers. <laughs> Dave Rogers, because... Do you watch your pockets? Um, I, he's a scouser, and I think he would probably still lay out of my head. I, but outside of that, he, he tells a few lies, and he's a wee bit of a wolf there. Present, present, I don't mean to hammer my teammates, but... We'll probably go for Danny Lafferty. Just a simple reason as um he's Panthers poor hey. He's Panthers really poor he it makes me laugh to be fair, so and another reason I would probably least like they but enjoy sitting beside him because he would make me laugh with his Panthers, but no Danny Danny's a great fellow, I'll go on to say that and um, he's done excellent for Derry, but probably probably Daniel because he would probably end up talking on a Glasgow accent and all to me, so <laughs> so I couldn't listen to that the whole of the court. And two more players, but this time, that you would prefer to sit beside on the same journey? Prefer from the past. I, well, I, I get on. they not gonna. I get on well with Paddy, so I would say Paddy. No, I probably would have sat beside him, and, and both of us would probably done a wee better son and watch a football or listen to horses and that no way down. So we, we had good good travels, me and Paddy. But and another one for totally opposite reasons, I sat beside for most of the away journeys was Sean Hargan, like. But for whatever reason, we just had a good bomb made about a crack, and that's the two boys that we probably probably would have sat beside in the way to Cork. So I'll just throw them two in there. Okay, and that just leaves me to wish you best luck for the rest of the season, and uh, hopefully we'll see you lifting a trophy at the end. Hopefully, hopefully we lift some. Cheers, Gringo. Thank you very much. No bother, boys.